إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا محمدنا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله نور النور وبدر البدور صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأولاده وأزواجه وخلفائه الراشدين المرشدين المهديين من بعده ووزرائه الكاملين في عهده خصوصا منهم على ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله وأطيعوه إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير وقال عز وجل ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى أفتمارونه على ما يرى لقد رآه نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى صدق الله العظيم وقد قال نبيه الكريم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة معراج المؤمن صدق الله وصدق رسول الله ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في نظم الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the universe, the sole creator, the sole cherisher, the sole sustainer of all that exists. And all that exists, exists with Allah's love and through Allah's love towards his creation. The most kind, the most merciful, the most gracious, the most giving, the giver of life and its taker. 
Salawat and salam be upon his final prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, noble companions, and all true believers until the very last day. And we are indeed in the very last few days of Allah's holy month of Rajab. According to our Muslim historians, it was exactly towards the end of this month, perhaps on 27th of Rajab, and today is the 26th of Rajab, and from Maghrib tonight will be the 27th. An extraordinary moment took place in the life of our blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And indeed, you may argue, an extraordinary moment in the history of mankind, namely the miraculous night journey and the mi'raj through the seven heavens and going to witness what no other eye had witnessed. No other eye had witnessed and no other soul had witnessed. Being before the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a great miracle an extraordinary gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted his final prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this gift, Allah included so many signs, so many great lessons that you and I can take from. But this gift, extraordinary gift, didn't happen just like that. It did not come after moments of joy and happiness and luxury and ease. Indeed, it happened in the year of sadness, the year of grief, sorrow. When the beloved Prophet ﷺ lost his right and left hand, you may argue. His beloved wife, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, his uncle, who supported him throughout his mission when Allah chose to send him as his final prophet and messenger, calling people who were attached to dunya and all of its amusements and were in the pinnacle of heedlessness, ghafla, calling them, trying to awaken them, trying to wake them up. Calling them, calling them to Tawheed, to witness the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of other divine qualities and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It came after Quraysh were the most merciless, the cruelest that they would be towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those few believers who believed in him and followed his message and accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the sole creator, as the Lord of the Lords, as the Lord of the universe. Allah blesses his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with an extraordinary gift. An amazing chapter of his life was written towards the end of the month of Rajab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records this event in the Holy Quran, in the glorious book, in these words. Glory be to the one who took his servants at night from the Holy Mosque to the furthest mosque. In order to, sh the surroundings of which we have blessed, in order to show him some of our signs. Indeed, truly he is the hearing, the seeing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins a statement by glorification, tasbih, we know what is to come is something truly extraordinary. Here is an event that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself narrated later on to his companions. There are several hadith which tell us about the miraculous night journey, some of which are recorded in Bukhari Sahih and Muslim Sahih and other books of hadith. 
I really don't have time to go in all details. But I would like to share with you a few lessons, few points from that miraculous night journey that may benefit us in this very moment when we have seen some disturbing images, distressing images in the last week or so, even in the last three, four years. And we were to the point, well, it couldn't be a worst year. But then again, something else happens and we say, well, this must be the worst of all calamities that we have witnessed. But this event, the miraculous night journey, can give us the balance that we are actually in need of. To go through any difficulty, to go through any calamity that may come our way. And we know, as our wise scholars told us, we are always in between one of the three. You may be enjoying a blessing, but while you are enjoying your blessings and favors, prepare for calamity that is heading your way. You are in good health right now, in prosperity, you have a full-time job. Alhamdulillah. You praise Allah, but start getting ready for a difficult moment that is to come. A calamity is heading your way. And when the calamity strikes, then stand firm and endure patiently. That's what they said. Why? Because there is no distress and calamity or catastrophe that will last forever. It will come to an end. There will be peak of that difficult moment and then it will go down slowly and gradually until you don't feel any more difficulty of that tribulation and calamity. And then the death will come and will take all of that. So we are always in between these three. Enjoying a favor or blessing, going through a difficult time or calamity, and waiting for our own death. That will take all of that away. And show us what it means to see the reality of the world. The eternity that we are told in the Holy Quran. The miraculous night journey in a way that picks some, some of those truths. And it helps us to see the wider picture. Because all the time we are, we are being confined and squeezed and squashed to see only the little bit. Which brings us lots of anxiety, anxious moments, difficulties, sadness, worry and so on. But when you expand your chest and see the wider picture, like we are now embarking upon the blessed month of Sha'aban, and in the horizons of Sha'aban you can all say, already see the light of the blessed month of Ramadan. So there is always some light at the end of the tunnel, in other words. And that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his messenger. By taking him at night, oh, Waking him up while he was asleep in his nice resting moment, comfortable, cozy, warm bed. The angel Jibril comes, rise. There's another mighty mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to undergo. And what happened was extraordinary indeed. Angel Jibril comes. And takes the Prophet so to speak by hand showing him the way. And in this is a huge lesson. We all need a guide. I don't think so we are clever and good and resilient enough or humble enough to travel the path without a guide. Someone who has already traveled it before us. To show us the way, to help us along the way. And this is what I learned from this first encounter. But then a beast is presented. A vehicle that the Prophet ﷺ and Sayyidina Jibreel would ride as they go along the way from Mecca to Jerusalem, Palestine. But now, as our Shaykh Abdul Hakim mentioned last year, why was it a beast, a riding beast that wasn't so glamorous, like it could have been an amazing, whatever, rocket or something that we will spend days and, 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 and years describing and all little details of it. But that would have taken away 
from the stature of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was the main actor in this whole journey. It was a chapter of his life, not Burak's. Not to take our attention towards something which is insignificant, that doesn't matter. So are we just talking now about geology and how earthquakes take place and how does it all work? Or are we actually praising Allah and remembering Allah in the aftermath of what we all witnessed and so that's the point so it seems that it was a very simple small beast it's a vehicle like we say this body of ours is just a vehicle that we ride our soul rides on its way towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its fuel is no other but tawbah and istighfar that's what it is so burak was just a means of transportation but again, some kind of special means of, of transportation in order to honor the Prophet Sallallahu A beast that was used by other Prophets as we understand before him, but no one else. So some kind of privilege is still there, but the, atten the attention is not going to the wrong place. And so, certainly the Prophet's figure is still the dominant one, the obvious one, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they go along the way. And along the way, Allah shows several signs to the Prophet ﷺ. And then they go through the seven heavens, and the Prophet ﷺ meets other prophets that Allah sent before him. And this moment is very important. Why did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the Prophet ﷺ from... He, his house was near Mecca, near Baytullah, Allah's holy house. In Mecca, near, near Kaaba. Straight up. And there was Bayt al-Ma'amur and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, instead he took him at night from Mecca to Jerusalem. And then from Jerusalem with Allah's permission the sky opened. And then Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu would shoot off like a shooting star. As one poet says like flying through the heavens like two stars outshining all others. Subhanallah going through the heavens. Why? To connect Islam with previous prophets and messengers. To affirm that Prophet Muhammad is the seal of prophethood. He is the crown of the messengership and was given the greatest of all honors in a way in this miraculous night journey. Being chosen to lead all previous prophets and messengers in prayer. For him to be their imam, their leader, including Sayyidina Adam, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and the rest of them. What an honor. But again, he shows his humility and his modesty throughout the journey. There he is humbled before other prophets and messengers. He's humbled before Sayyidina Jibreel. He's even humbled before say Burak, the beast that he rode. But what kind of humility and modesty did he show when Allah invited him where no other soul or person or individual would pass? The line that no one would have has crossed ever before him. Even Sayyidina Jibreel, here you go, like the hadith says, cloak, like clouds. He was just like taken up towards some different level. Sidratil Muntaha, near the Lot tree, as the Quran described in Surah Al Najm. Even Sayyidina Jibreel salam, couldn't go that way. It seems like so much purity is needed in order to ascend spiritually. You need to work on your inner self, day in and day out, in order to rise really and truly high. So, the Prophet ﷺ was accompanied by a guide. Now he's losing the guide. But he is about to witness something that no one else could bear to witness. Sayyidina Musa والسلام, we learn from the Quran, asked Allah to show his majesty, to show his, some of his signs, his, some of his majesty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, I'll present myself to the mountains, and if the mountains can absorb my might and majesty, only then shall you see me, O Musa. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented his majesty towards the mountains, the mountains crushed. 
like the earth moved, the plateaus moved in Turkey and Syria recently, and he shook. The mountains crashed, and Musa والسلام, fainted, couldn't bear it, couldn't see it. As soon as he regained his conscious, he says, Subhanak, glory be to you. And the ayah I began was Subhanallah. Glory be to you. Glory be to He, Allah, capital H, who does wonders in His creation, who is not asked how and what He does, but we shall be asked and assembled on the Day of Judgment. So He's taken there. Musa can't bear to see Allah's majesty. We just cannot imagine possibly cannot imagine what it is but we would like to know what it is that the Prophet وسلم, was shown there and then the length of two bows or even closer is like one is shooting a bow is like 100 or 150 yards so 200 300 yards away but he I'm sure so so much of Allah's majesty and beauty and light, like some traditions describe the Prophet noticing angels along the way, some of them just standing still, just standing in amazement, being amazed, seeing Allah's beauty, others bowing down in ruku'ah, understanding Allah's might and power. Others going all the way down in sujood, in prostration, and just staying in sujood, making Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, tasbih of the highest level, realizing, understanding Allah's majesty. He saw all of that. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, at that very special moment, prescribes the, the 50 prayers for us believers to pray every day and night. But out of his mercy, we know the story, so I don't need to go into it. He makes it eventually five in number, but 50 in reward out of his generosity and kindness. And he comes back to this earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And many scholars will say, experiencing such ecstasy, such high level, why would you bother coming back to this earth? Why would you bother coming back to Abu Jahl, who's going to deny your story? and mock you and the rest of the Quraysh that couldn't, they were still very deep in their ghafla, couldn't see this, any sign of Allah, couldn't see the light of guidance. Why would you bother? He chooses to come back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of his ample compassion and mercy towards the mankind, resembling Allah's mercy and kindness towards his entire creation. And also, not being able to bear how people are indulged in kufr, disbelief and shirk, idol of worshipping. He comes back to fulfill the rest of his mission. To accomplish, to complete his mission that Allah assigned to him. What it is? To deliver the mankind from the darknesses of disbelief and misguidance onto the light of guidance. And the miraculous night journey indeed is a story, an event that we at least once a year need to remember, recall. Just like this dome here recalls it. And the dome of rock in Jerusalem recalls it even in a better way. And that's where it all began, the ascent through the heavens. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he helps us to see some of his signs that are all over the place, within ourselves and everywhere around us. And what a mighty sign we saw just about a week ago in Turkey and Syria. And a few years back, and then three, four years ago with the COVID pandemic. Have we forgotten all of that? What are we thinking about right now and where are we heading to? This is the lesson I would like each and every one of us to take from this little sermon. And I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring ease after difficulty, to help us to be united. It is only with our unity and our compassion and our empathy and love that we can survive any difficult moment 
any difficult situation, wherever it may occur and arise on the face of this beautiful planet. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بارك الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شأن شرف الصفية فقد قال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين يا رب العالمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين يا رحيم يا رحمن قلوبنا بين إسبعيك الكريمتين تقلبها كيف تشاء فثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك ومحبتك ورضاك يا رب العالمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار وآخر دعواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة